All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. My name is Eric Pauzin with 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be getting into the Valspar Championship. We're going to talk about the course preview, uh, touch on the top picks in each price point range, give you guys some core plays, give you guys some fades. And then I'm also going to show you guys a new feature on 9 to 5 Sports. Well, it's not a new feature. I just added in some data points, some new tools into a feature that we already have. That's going to be the custom model for you guys. So instead of like showing the lineup tool, uh, like a first look build this week, I'm going to show you guys the custom model. And that is actually just going to be a result of DraftKings not having out their pricing just yet. Right now for th this video, I'm going to use Yahoo pricing. Yahoo's very good. They typically get the pricing out a day before FanDuel and DraftKings, which typically leads to some easy value. But for the most part, it's typically on par for the course. There's just a few players each and every week that are kind of just like, how did they end up priced that low? This week, that's actually going to be Russell Knox. I'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, but the tough part about this week, I'm just going to start off with this, is that it's going to be difficult to know what the mental state a golfer is going to be in. So there's like three different things going on here. So we're going to have golfers that didn't play last week that maybe thought that they could have played in that tournament. They're going to be a little bit more maybe geared up to play because you know every golfer wants to play in the Players' Championship. So those golfers that didn't make it, they might be a little bit more ready to go. Then we have the golfers that, you know, had the AMP, the AMPM uh, split. Their week was a really long week. Okay. It was. And the nice thing about those golfers is that a lot of them did not play in, you know, two or three of those events prior, which were also kind of mentally grueling weeks. So we have to see on that. And then three is those PM AM guys. Yes, they had the two days off, but also, you know, that was a mentally grueling Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for a lot of them as well. The thing with this week is a lot of the golfers that played at the Players' Championship last week might withdraw, and that's going to be because they're a little bit tired. You know, we don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. And that can make this field and this tournament a little bit more difficult. But as it sits right now, it's a it's a pretty good-looking week, and it's one that I'm kind of excited for. So, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. we got the strategy coming up here. So the Valspar Championship course preview. Um, one thing I want to point out is that, you know, the average cut line is, you know, about one over par, but the average winning score is about 12 under par. So really it's a week in which it's very close and we can kind of see that with the scoring. Sam Burns really played well last year. Uh, the two years prior to that, Paul Casey won and then Adam Haddon won at 14 under par. So it is just like a normal uh, scoring event. Not difficult, not easy. Just you have to hit your shots and you can't make that many bogeys. So just kind of looking at it, a Larry Packard course design. It's par 71, Bermuda greens uh, with POA trivials. Uh, it's, green speeds are going to be 12 on the stint meter. We actually got that confirmed. I like that. So, of course, yards, it is kind of a normal uh, yards course, and it is a Parkland-style course. So now getting to the key stats for this week. I am going to be looking at strokes gain T to green uh, directly. T, strokes gain T to green is more of a blanket stat because it has other stats in it, but this week I kind of want that. Uh, one thing I want to point out as well as the birdie to bogey ratio and the 200 plus key stats is that driving distance is finally a more uh, significant factor than or a good drive percentage, which it's been the first time in a few weeks. So I just kind of want to point that out. Uh, but the top stat fits uh, this week are going to be Justin Thomas, Victor Hovland, Russell Henley, uh, JP, Paul, Casey, little typo there. I apologize. Guy Scheffler and Jason Kolkrak. So looking at course history, we got some players popping up here once again, Paul Casey, Louis Oosthuizen, and then Abram Answer. There's actually a lot of golfers with some really good course history. So from like one down to 12 for course history rank, they're all about the same. Uh, just looking at some golfers with some floor ties. There we go. But yeah, recent form, guys. Recent form. Justin Thomas, Russell Henley, Scotty Scheffler, Victor Hovland, Sanjay M, Taylor Gooch, Keith Mitchell, Denny McCarthy, and KH Lee. So one thing I did on the data sheet, and I'll talk about that in a second, I guess. Uh, I want to talk about this week's strategy. So, you know, for last week, don't really discount what the AM wave did. Yes, there's a significant advantage there, but you can't really discount them. But in the same sense, don't really penalize a guy that had the PM split. It's just kind of a shoulder shrug. They missed the cut. Oh, well, you know, obviously they're at a huge disadvantage. I already talked about kind of the worry this week, and yeah, we kind of get the basis of this week. All right, guys, so we're going to be getting into the high tier picks here. Once again, we are going to be using Yahoo pricing. Okay. 
Uh, DraftKings hasn't come out with their salary as of me recording this. So we're using Yahoo pretty much as typically the same for Yahoo, DraftKings, and FanDuel. The only exception is that typically FanDuel is a little bit easier to make, you know, a quality build. And Yahoo just typically has a few, like, head scratchers. Like Russell Knox is a head scratcher this week with his price point, And he has been kind of the last few weeks. They just do that sometimes. They have a couple of golfers that it's like, how did they end up priced that way? For the most part, they do a good job, though. Uh, one thing I want to point out as well. So I did some updates here. And I'll kind of show you guys here real quick on the custom model. Uh, I added in a bunch of data for like the last five starts, the last 10 starts, the last 20 starts, the last 15 starts on the PGA Tour. So a lot of you guys know us that our 9 to 5 members. You can just click through the key stats that you want to see, and it'll add it on there for you. So like you can do that. We already had the preset course history. We already had the preset recent form in there, but now we have that key stat in there as well. That's going to be in there for you. But what I have done is what I always do, you know, I curate the data for you looking at the most significant key stats. But what we're looking at is the recent form is going to be over the last 10 starts on tour instead of the last 10 uh, tournaments uh, date wise. Okay. So we're looking at the last 10 starts for that player, not on the PGA tour. So it's going to pull in much more uh, recent form. And then we're also going to be doing that for the key stats as well. Uh, the reason for that is just, it's slightly more predictive. Uh, the only issue is that sometimes golfers like Louis Oosthuizen, where they don't have that many starts on the PGA tour, um, they tend to pop up a little bit more sometimes because their starts in the previous season were a lot better. And that's kind of happened with Louis a little bit. I still think he's a quality player and he's um, someone that you can play this week, but that is something I did want to warn you about. Okay, but yeah, looking at Justin Thomas here. So Justin Thomas, looking at, so his course history is pretty good. 13th, and then he did miss the cut in 2017. But once again, 2017 is five years ago. Okay, we see course history, the significance of course history really drop off from four, from year four to year five. Okay, and then year six, really just not that relevant. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt that that age four is going to be coming from 2017. That's going to be five years ago. The reason why is because we don't have that uh, COVID year. They didn't play this event in 2020. So I want to look at the last four starts here. So that's why I'm including 2017. If it was 2016, probably won't be looking at it this week, but you know, we have it. So I kind of just figured we use it. Sometimes it matters. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but obviously we see he played well here last year and it's no shock. I mean, look at this guy. He's the best staff in the field. He ranks top 12 or better in all the key stats that we're looking at. He had a pretty good week at the players championship, kind of left some to be desired. I think he's someone that could be geared up ready to go this week because he knows he probably could have won that tournament if he just didn't make some glaring mistakes maybe if he just made a couple more putts you know he could have been right there in contention uh but looking at it a little bit deeper you know his starts before that sixth eighth 20th fifth you know that's all good from justin thomas overall ranks top 10 in the 95 mile but that's because that his course history rank is you know 58th it's the best staff in the field best reason for him and 12th best specialist in the field as well so do like jt a decent amount and then looking at victor hovland victor hovland has now been in contention three straight weeks on tour and we know just looking at like the dp tour and his like stars worldwide uh he has been playing well as well but he needs that pga tour win here okay so i think that he has a good chance to get it this week so third place finish here last year and kind of the worry with victor hovland the last two weeks is that you know last week he uh missed the cut in the year prior and then just not having enough course history uh two weeks ago this week he does he you know third place finish love to see that uh looking at his key stats top 34 better than all the key stats that we're looking at like that um you know recent form prior to that second fourth missed cut and then 30th you know ranks out as the best pick in the nine to five mile this week uh really strong pick I, I would probably go a little bit more jt but i do like victor hovland this week and then looking at scotty scheffler he's another guy that made the cut at the players championship uh prior to that first seventh first so i like that from him uh nice straight mid cuts in a row 29th place finish here last year uh fifth best staff in the field sixth best specialist in the field uh third best recent form out of anyone in the field fifth best pick in the 95 mile this week and i also am going to bring up Corey connor so Corey connor's i hope that he gets priced down a little bit more on DraftKings this week instead of how he is priced on yahoo that is going to be worried with me but i do think i do think we can make him a court play this week So the thing that I like about Corey Connors is, yes, he did make the cut at the Players Championship, finished 26th there. Once again, that date is going to be updated, you know, pretty much when it's available, but that's probably going to be Tuesday morning with the Monday night finish for the Players Championship. So, you know, we'll get that updated here shortly. You'll probably bump up slightly a little bit with recent form rank, which might bump up his model rank a little bit. But as we can see, 
You know, now 23 starts on tour over the past year, only three missed cuts. Love that. So we should have that safety from him to go out and make the cut this week. Of course, history-wise, 21st and the 16th place finish. Like that, top 12 staff at top 14 specialists. And that's kind of the thing this week is that the top-end guys in the field this week are really just a lot better than some of the other names that are going to be lower on, which is something I like. You know, the worry with him is that, yes, he did miss the cut, um, you know, just three starts ago and five starts ago. That's kind of the worry with him, but I think he's kind of past that. He, he wasn't exactly golfing poorly, but, you know, just – wasn't putting it all together. I think he's past that. So I do like him a lot as a pick this week, and that's why I'm going to take him as a core play this week. So we're going to drop down, and I'm kind of cheating a little bit this week with Yahoo. I'm going to be looking at $40 and below for the mid-tier price point plays. Typically, you know, that'd be the 8K price point tier. Uh, but I did like the guys in the $40 range a lot better than I did uh, a little bit lower on, so we're going to be looking at that instead. So just looking at Paul Casey. Paul Casey was in contention to win last week, which I kind of take as a good thing. We know he really uh, struggled down the stretch uh, two events ago on Sunday. He shot like plus 16. It was insane. Uh, but before that, 15th to 25th, and then a missed cut. So, you know, four straight make cuts on tour now. That's going to be good. Overall, pretty good staff hit. Obviously, you know, two-time champ here. Uh, backed it up with the 21st place finish last year. You know, I do think it's a good sign that he finally had a really good week last week. And, you know, he what, he did get a little bit unlucky. You know, you talk about hole 16 there with Cam Smith, duck hooks it into the trees. You know, that ball could have easily ended up in the water. Meanwhile, Paul Casey hits a perfect drive and it ends up in a divot. Didn't get released or anything. Kind of had to punch out. Felt the need to punch out instead of go for it ball trickles down the green and ends up by um, a water drain and he didn't get relief from that so there's just a lot of weird things for Paul Casey last week down the stretch that maybe will make him a little bit more mentally geared up to go obviously this is a course that he likes I don't expect him withdrawal so that's kind of another charity on top here is that we don't expect him to withdraw you know fourth best staff in the field second best course history uh, 14th best recent form out of anyone in the field I uh, overall these ranks as the fourth best pick in the 95 mile this week as well he probably will be priced up a little bit on DraftKings, but on Yahoo, obviously, you can make that work. Uh, looking at Russell Henley. So, Russell Henley, I think we just keep playing him, honestly. Like, I don't think I have to keep saying he's the hit or miss. He was in contention once again this week at the Players' Championship. And really, what's holding Russell Henley back right now, just making a little bit too many bogeys. We can kind of see that with his birdie to bogey ratio. Uh, 29th in the field, which isn't terrible. He's making a bunch of birdies. But if he cuts down on those bogeys a little bit, he could really go off. Uh, and win, obviously, uh, you know, eighth in strokes against the green, eighth in strokes against approach, 37th in that 200 plus, uh, yards range. Uh, now made 10 straight cuts in a row. Love that. He's pretty much a top 35 or better finish type of guy. It's really more or less if he's making those a little bit too many bogeys, you know, he might not want to be on him, but man, he is just right there. He could easily go out and win an event. So third best staff in the field. Second best recent form out of anyone in the field. Gets knocked for that course history, but really that hasn't been a problem for him yet. So I, I do like him once again this week. And then looking at someone like Max Homa. So Max Homa had a good week at the Players' Championship. I think he ended up finishing like minus seven on the day in round four. So he's going to be coming off of a good event. So that's going to be four straight make cuts in a row of top 20 better or of top 20 or better finishes. So 17th, 10th, 14th prior to that Players' Championship. Love that from him. I guess the worry would be that you know, we're not seeing the best stats here from him, but still ranks out top 20 in the field. That kind of tells you the caliber of the field. Once again, I mentioned it does drop off. You know, we got the players that stand out, and then it kind of just drops off. Uh, sixth place finish here last year. He does typically play better on those slightly harder tracks, which is a good sign from Max Homa, and then missed a cut in uh, 2019. But, you know, that's three years ago. Don't really have to worry about that. Overall, top 20 pick in the 95 mile this week. And then looking at Jason Colcrack once again, guys, um, you know, he's going to be a core play once again. I'm sorry. He is. So here we go. Jason Colcrack. going to give him the highlight reel here. So course history wise, 13th, second, eighth and 58th place finish. So obviously he loves this course. Three straight top 15 or better finishes from Jason Colcrack. You really got to love that from him, honestly. Uh, key stat wise, we can see nothing too alarming there. Key stat wise, uh, Strokes and Tita Green, 68th in that, uh, top 30 or better in Strokes and Approach, birdie to bogey ratio, and then top 50 in effective scoring in that top 200 or plus yardage range. 
Um, recent form wise has been pretty good. Uh, he's only missed one cut over the last nine starts and really just been a top 30 machine. He did have that PMT time two weeks ago or at the players championship and he was able to make the cut, you know, he didn't finish the best. So I guess that'd be something that you worry about with Jason Kolkrak is that he didn't finish the best at the players championship, but he had the PMT time and he made the cut. That's, that's pretty good. You know, you know, we'll take that from him. Um, and he might be priced down again because of his, you know, kind of lackluster week last week. We'll see if he's like in the 8K or like low 9K price point range on DraftKings. It's going to be tough for me to pass up on him this week. And now we're going to move down into kind of the low tier for Yahoo. So just 30 and below. And as you'll see, there, there's a lot of solid value this week. All right, there we go. And might have to bump it up to 30. Let's see. So the first one is going to be Cage Lee. Cage Lee, guys, uh, you know, he's just been a cut maker. Um, it's going to be 11 straight made cuts in a row. He's someone that was in one of my better builds just because I had Keegan, Cage Lee, Brian Harmon in one build. Unfortunately, Patrick Cantlay really just hurt that lineup a lot, <laughs> which has been a weird thing uh, where Stud has been hurting like a really good Studs and Duds build. John Rahm as well, so kind of a weird thing there. But Gage Lee, I mean, really just a, a solid pick at probably a, a cheap price point on DraftKings. He's a cheap price point on Yahoo. He was like 6.3 on Yahoo at the Players' Championship who had just come off of a made cut. So, so far here, he uh, finished 29th last year. In 2019, he withdrew. So, yeah, I, I didn't look into why, but, you know, just been a cut maker at a cheap price point or someone that's a top 25 staff hit. Oh, not the best staff hit. I mean, we can kind of see that, but... Still, as his probable price point, I and mean, then his price point on Yahoo, that is a play that I really do like. And then looking at someone like EVR. So EVR I do like, uh, which is kind of weird to say because typically I don't like him as a pick. So we can see recent form-wise, did miss the cut um, in his last event prior to the Players' Championship, but played about the Players' Championship, and then prior to that 39th, 20th, 25th place finish. So that's all good from him. You know, not the best staff in the field once again, but in this field, still running solid top 25 uh, staff at wise. A recent form wise top 30 in the field you know that could be a little bit better but still race out as someone that's a, a top 46 or better pick in the nine to five model i do think that's going to get a little bit better once we add in the players championship data so yeah he's someone i do like as well and then looking at russell knox so russell knox yes he's going to be a core play as well so yes looking at it from like the a year round standpoint not the best you know that's fine but if we just like look at just this season, he's been really good. So oh, he's going to have made the cut, the players championship, which you would like to see. So five straight make cuts in a row. And they pretty much just all been top 40 or better finishes, given what his price point could be this week. Things can be a standout play looking at his course history. We can see 21st, 24th and 16th place finish. I do like that from him. Uh, specialist wise, you know, it does pretty well specialist wise as well, but overall, you know, not the best pick, but one thing, and this is another pick where, I think the price point is going to be good. And then I also think um, he's going to get a nice bump when the player's championship data comes in. But we can kind of start to see that it does start to drop off really after that mid-tier price point tier. I think the low tier is not going to be the safest tier, uh, but we'll have to see. I do think he's going to be someone that makes the cut. And at what I think his price point will be, which is probably like 8.3 on DraftKings, I think it'll be a quality pick. So yeah, Russell Knox this week is another pick that I do like as well. Uh, just going to be getting back into... Uh, the value tier and then we'll be wrapping up here uh, showing you guys some fades and then I'll kind of show you guys that custom model too a little bit deeper and then we'll begin out of here nope wrong one here we go all right so here we go We've got three values for you Brian Stewart uh, Brian Stewart has made five straight cuts in a row on the PGA Tour he's someone that obviously didn't play in the Players Championship which could be a good thing. You know, you didn't have to worry about the weather. That was a long week for a lot of these golfer. And, you know, besides that played well, you know, his recent form start there was at the Puerto Rico open and then had a ninth place finish at the event prior to that made five straight cuts in a row on tour. He's made two out of four cuts here, including a top 10 finish here in 2019, you know, not going to be the best pick, but for someone that'll probably be a cheap uh, value play. You know, I don't mind that from Brian Stewart and looking at doc Redmond, doc Redmond had a decent week at the players championship. So it's going to be uh uh, four out of five make cuts in a row. 
Uh, missed the cut at the event prior to that, but then the 61st, 33rd, and 25th place finish. Not the best stat fit. Once again, it really drops off after the mid-tier, but don't mind him. And then someone who I'm really interested to see price point-wise on DraftKings is going to be Vaughn Taylor, guys. A 6th and an 18th place finish here the last two years. He's made four straight cuts in a row on the PGA Tour. Uh, he had that 7th place finish at the Puerto Rico Open. Uh, you know, really just a decent pick. Top 40 stat fit. Uh, fifth best course history in the field, uh, 66 best recent form, which might suggest that he'll be right around a make cut. But overall, he's top 40 in the 9 to 5 miles. So a pretty decent uh, potential value play there from Vaughn Taylor. Uh, and then we're get, we have one more core play here, and then we'll be uh, showing you guys some fades, and then we'll be showing you guys the custom model too. So the fourth and final core play is going to be Alex Noren here. So Alex Noren, I do like. He's a guy that finished 26th at the Players' Championship, and after that, uh, fifth place finish at the Honda Classic, 48th place, 48th place finish at the Genesis Invitational, sixth place finish at the Waste Management Phoenix Open. You know, he's just been playing some pretty good golf. Alex Noren, over the last year, he's had 20 starts, now 21 starts, and only four missed cuts, which is something that I do like. Uh, of course, history rise, 21st place finish here last year uh he's gonna be a top 40 staff hit which is gonna be the worry but you know top 20 specialist top 20 in recent form and then top 12 in course history rank overall it does rank out top 12 in the nine to five mile this week so you know you could kind of go a safe fair and balanced approach and i guess i'll just show you guys that real quick with the lineup tool as well uh just including the four core plays for this week we'll show you guys that real quick so court connors i don't mind louis who stays and depends on his price point paul casey i like obviously uh, but it was Jason Kokrak as well, Alex Noren, and then let's see here. Russell Knox. Russell Knox is really cheap. And that's kind of the thing with Yahoo. He's kind of, I don't want to say he's probably not going to be a free square this week. He's probably going to miss the cut now, but um, he's been a free square really the past like five weeks on Yahoo. But um, looking at it, just based off of these four right now, uh, average mile rank of around 13, uh, recent form rank average uh, 20th, uh, stat rank average 22nd, of course, history rank average uh, 15th, which I do like. You know, it's a pretty solid base. Uh, it depends on like drafting price point, but right now on Yahoo, this sets you up really nice. So, a uh, pretty decent starting point there on Yahoo. Then we're going to get into some fades real quick, and then I'll show you guys the custom model too. Uh, looking at the fades here, so Gary Woodland. So Gary Woodland is a name that I think might be popular this week, and that's what worries me. We can see based off his course history, three straight missed cuts here. So that is not a good sign. And some of those years, he was in really good recent form. He's a really good staff, and he just didn't make the cut. He's going to be coming off of a missed cut at the Players' Championship, and I think some people are going to be looking at those good finishes from him recently. You know, those two top 10 finishes. They might be looking at that. Which would worry me because it has been there, you know, prior to the miscut, the players championship had been there, you know, two top five finishes. People might be looking at that. And once again, my fades are going to be golfers that I think can win, but I also think are a little bit too risky for, you know, the name value that they might have. And so Patrick Reed would be right up that alley. He's going to be someone that people might try to go back to the well with this week after finally having a good week. And one thing I found interesting about Patrick Reed, Reed last week is that I put out a stat. It said uh, best average finish for golfers um, coming out of a delay. Patrick Reed was third. <laughs> that doesn't sound a little bit fishy. I don't, I don't know. I mean, that was kind of alarming to me, especially with how bad he's been playing recently. That was, that was a little bit crazy. Now, he is typically one of those golfers that on tougher tracks, on harder scoring events, he does do better, which are typically why there are delays. But, man, third best, that was a, that was a little bit crazy. Uh, and he obviously did play well. Just kind of weird there. Something something might be going on there. Don't know what. Have no clue what it could be, but something interesting there. But, once again, course history-wise, uh, two missed cuts in a row. Did finish second and 38. So, if he did find something in his golf game, you know, he might be able to go on and get a top 10 finish. I just think that's a little bit too risky this week. You know, it might depend on his price one, but for now, that is a little bit too risky. Looking at someone like Tom Hoagie. Tom Hoagie has been playing great golf this season, but he's missed three straight cuts here at this tournament. So oh, all, overall, he has had great recent form, but you know, he's been in a mental grueling um, last you know four tournaments now with the American Express, the Arnold Palmer Invitational, the AT&T Pebble Beach. Um, didn't play at the Honda Classic, but you know, these are a bunch of events that are kind of mentally grueling. And we'll see, you know, he might be someone that just ends up withdrawing as well. We'll, we'll see uh, because it, it's been a toll on him and he hasn't played well at this course. So we could see that being a factor. 
And then Doug Gim. I feel like Doug Gim just had a lot of TV time and he's been kind of just a popular name. A lot of people in the PGA DFS community like him. Uh, but, you know, he's just not a good pick this week. A second, you know, he might have found something in his game at the Players' Championship, but, you know, bad recent form, uh, bad course history, just not a good stat fit. So he is also someone that worries me as well. But just taking another quick dive into the custom model tool here, guys. So I do really like this. It's my goal is to always make it as simple as possible for you guys. You know that. So right now, how we have it selected, it's course history and recent form. We always had that pulled up. It's going to be the most four recent starts on tour, and it's going to be the most four, uh, or it's going to be the course history over the last four starts. And then, you know, typically I like to just put in, you guys can put in whatever you want, but as we can see, we got the birdie or better percentage, last five tournaments, last 10, last 15, last 20. Now that's awesome. We got pretty much all the significant key stats that week in and week out are going to be the most like significant. So I don't know, let's, let's, you think it's going to be a little bit more of a driving distance that, or we, you might want to look at that. You can, you can do that. Um, if you wanted to look at, I don't know, greens gained over the last, uh, five weeks, you can look at that. You can pull that in there uh, and just kind of automatically update. So it'll tell you who would be the best pick off of that data that you're putting in there. And it's kind of fun. It's kind of another way to look at it. You know, obviously the custom model tool or the cheat sheet is going to be the most accurate, you know, week in and week out. But sometimes you can find a slight edge um, if you think a tournament's going to play slightly different than it has in the past, or you just want to kind of look at something else, you can go ahead and pull that up. Like you could put in uh, part five scoring over the last five weeks you could do last 20 as well you know, kind of just get that accurate data point in there as well you can do that you want to put a little bit more recent form in there you can do that as well and it's just that simple that just updates like that and you're good to go um you know it's just a, it's a fun way of looking at it uh, it's gonna be a little bit more accurate so uh yeah good fun tool there for the custom model tool uh at nine to five so hopefully you guys enjoyed that uh, as part of my uh sunday project there uh, but that's all I have for you guys. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe. Gotta get those numbers up. Let's pump those subscribe numbers up. I would appreciate that. Uh, but hopefully have a good weekend this week. I'm going to be in Vegas. So let's have some fun there. Let's win some bets there. Uh, let's have a good Vols Championship. All right. That's all I have for you guys. Let's have a good week. And as always, let's keep cashing.